I was sent a new 4K dash cam. This is a mirror type cam with a 1080p camera for the rear. It's got GPS, it's got everything on it, it's got a touch screen. And uh, we're gonna take a look at this one and uh, do a quick evaluation. I'll show you some, some test shots. Let's check this one out. I shot the preliminary shots in 1080 and I upscaled them to 4K, but the, the front camera shots coming off this will be in presented in true 4K. This is the Pelsey P12 Pro mirror dash cam. Large 12 inch touchscreen. It's got 4K up front and 1080p resolution in the back. Collision detection during and driving and parking. And uh, this is a brand new one as you can see. It's not been opened yet. We're gonna open this one up, hook it up, take it out, put it in the car, and we'll drive around a bit. Let you guys get some pictures. Oh, what do you know? AC emergency alert. Well, I guess it works. This is only a test. Totally forgot about that. Oh well. So this is what's in the box. If the box will ever open. You got a touchscreen mirror that just attaches over top of the existing mirror and a lens that you can focus. We'll take this and put it in the car. And then it also has a rear camera in here. That's a GPS module and a rear camera module that plugs in. Now usually these have a red wire on them so that you can connect them up to your reversing lights so that it'll bring the rear camera up full screen when you're reversing. I won't be connecting that because in my case it's not going to be used as a reversing camera. It's just going to be used to um, show you guys the pictures at the back of the car once I get it set up. Car comes, comes with all the mounting hardware. These clips go around the back and hold it up against your existing mirror. So they just clip on here. And then you put it around your existing mirror and put the other clip in place. That holds the camera in place. There should be a couple of these in this. Little tool for fishing the wire in place. Um, I probably won't bother with that this time because uh, I don't know whether it'll be staying in the car or whether it's just going to be there temporarily to run some tests and the GPS. I don't know if I'll even bother to connect that. Maybe I'll plug it in just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so uh, USB Type-C for the power adapter. It's got a USB Type-C 12 volt power point adapter. Your SD card goes in, a GPS plug plugs into here. As you can see, it's a larger size GPS plug uh, so that you don't get them mixed up and the rear camera plugs into that port right there. So let's uh, hook it up to power and I'll get an SD card. And we'll test it and see how it looks in here. Then we're gonna go stick it in the car and we'll do some driving. In the package, it comes with an SD card, so I will use the SD card that shipped with it instead of the one that I was going to use. So let's just install the SD card, hook it up to power. Before I do that, let's just check the specs and see what the bit rate is and so forth and what size of SD card it will support. Okay, the instruction manual shows that it supports up to a 256 gig memory card. We're going to put the included 32 gig card into the camera. card fits in with the label facing to the driver so the contacts facing forward just snaps in just like that we get the adapter going and of course this is the rear camera let's get the camera powered up I want to see what the picture looks like on here and then I'm going to go and mount it in the car before it gets dark 
it's a mirror as well wonderful I, I hate the ones that are a mirror because you always get reflections but that's just me we'll plug the power in and plug in the rear camera and there's the picture from the front camera that looks pretty clear to me even even just on this telling me I'm not the GPS isn't hooked up so it's not recording any speed obviously uh, if I peel this off I should be able to bring the rear camera up more than likely just by tapping the screen I can oh, please format the SD card so let's format the SD card Okay, and that's recording. That turns recording on and off. I was looking for the, that's taking a still photo. How do I switch cameras? Probably swipe, there we go. Swipe to switch cameras. So there's the rear camera. And it looks like it's going to be a mirror image. Is it a mirror image or not? Uh, no, it's not a mirror image, okay. That is uh, unfortunate. I would really like to see it being a mirror image because uh, when it's not a mirror image, when you're looking at the camera, something that's going to be on the right side of the screen is going to appear on the wrong side of the mirror. It's got to be a way to mirror that. Um, it's okay to record it as a regular image, but when you're looking at a mirror camera, you want it to be a mirror image. So let's just tap the screen. We'll tap the home button. And quit the current video, yes. Uh, home, okay, let's say, let's try camera settings. Record resolution, 4K plus 1080. You can probably change that down too. Uh, you can do it uh, 1080 plus 1080, 2.4 plus 1080, or 4K plus 1080. What did it say there? Choose 4K assistance. Well, choose. Assistant driving will be turned off. What does that mean? Oh well, I want to record this at the best quality. Loop recording. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. Okay, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. We'll select 60. Uh, G sensor sensitivity, wide dynamic range, video watermark. We'll turn that off. I don't like watermarks. Rear mirror. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Return. Let's go back to dash cam. Now it should be a mirror image, which it is, and that's what we want. We want whatever appears to be on the right side to appear on the right side of the screen, looking from the back of the car. That's what we need. Okay, so now that that has been set, uh, these things are pretty self-explanatory on how they work. I'm going to go mount this in the car, or at least attempt to mount it in the car. We'll see how I can come up with mounting the rear camera. I'd like to put it outside so I can get the very best low angle shot looking out right about where the license plate is. That seems to be the best place. That's where I mounted the one in my, my work vehicle. I've got one in my truck at work and I mounted the rear camera at the back. And it's great because I drive a panel truck that has no, no back window, right? So it's great to be able to see what's behind me on the, the mirror cam. And I'm hoping I can do the same in my car because once you've driven with a camera out back, behind the vehicle where you can see everything behind you. You never want to go back to just using a mirror once you're used to it. It's great. So let me go mount this in the car. All right, I've got the camera temporarily mounted in my car. When I say temporary, I mean very temporary. I'm gonna shoot this video, I'm gonna drive around. We'll clean the windshield, of course. And uh, we'll drive around and get some shots during the day. I'll do some more at night. And then I'm gonna remove this camera. It's not staying in my car. And there's a reason for that. And that's because in my car, other than taking the bumper all apart and mounting it outside, which I would probably do if I was gonna keep it in the car full time, but I'm not. And there's a few reasons why. We'll evaluate how the picture looks. I'll turn the car on right now. So we can uh, see what the picture looks like. So there's the back view behind my car. And if I, I think if I do that, I can adjust the brightness. Uh, I don't have the GPS plugged in. 
I might plug that in just for this test and just leave it hang. On the uh, hang down off the dash, but the front camera, if I swipe over, uh, it's both cameras, there's the front camera. And I can, of course, position that by adjusting the, the lens at the front here. I can point that around. The, the problem is I'm seeing this part of the the car which is stuck on the window which is giving me a blind spot there not not really that big a deal though there will be a blind spot when I swing over to both views you can see the front and the back view at the same time it's covering most of what's going on in front of the car I'm missing of course what's happening over on the right side over here I can just see right to around where the front bumper is I'm not seeing quite as far to the right as I could um, with a regular conventional camera because it's sitting back several inches from the window because it's mounted on the, uh, the the mirror itself which which is fine it does give me a fairly good view and if the camera was mounted behind the car like on the back of the car on the back bumper this is the type of view you would see and that is absolutely perfect but I can't mount it on my back bumper without taking the back bumper off and then drilling a hole to bring the wires in which again I'm not about to do on this car it's not an old car it's a 2019 and I'm not about to start drilling holes in the bumper to fish wires in and there's just no place that I can do it to make it work now what I've done in the past for my rear cameras is I've mounted them high up in the rear window which is what I had planned to do on this one too but I couldn't because of the design of the camera I couldn't see out the back window and I'll show you what I mean the problem is this is a very steep rake window and with the camera the way it was mounted this is what I would see there's no adjustment to bring the camera lower so that was out I had to come up with another way of mounting the camera for this test shoot and this is what I've come up with and as I say it's really it's really really temporary that's right just stuck on with some black tape which will be good enough so if you see the camera shaking while I'm driving that's the reason but that's where it's going to have to be for this test and once the test is over this camera is coming out going back in the box and then it'll get sold to somebody else or I might hang on to it and someday if I'm feeling it feeling adventurous I might pull the bumper apart and try to bring the cable in the only place I can see that I could possibly bring the cable in is through the drain hole right here but then I'd still have cable exposed going into the car around the seal and that's really not professional I know my car needs to be washed it hasn't been washed in a few months then we've had water bands on all summer so we have not been permitted to wash our cars at risk of getting a big fine anyway that's beside the point yeah somebody scratched my car I didn't do that somebody scratched my car um, ideally I'd like to mount it under the bumper the problem is there's really no place to put such a camera unless I take out the one that's already there the backup camera that's in about the perfect position but as you can see I guess I might be able to might be able to fish a wire I don't know if I can fish a wire in here or not it might make it leak I don't want to damage I don't want to damage anything but um, anyway ideally it would be mounted back here, but I don't want to be drilling any holes in the car to mount it. And there's not really any place to mount it other than down on the license plate frame here. I could mount it onto one of these, but again, that bracket that it's supplied with doesn't really pertain to mounting it on a, a vertical surface. It has to mount on a horizontal surface, kind of like where that camera is. So because the fact that I really don't want to drill any holes into my still relatively new car, it won't be going on this car on a permanent basis but we'll get some fantastic pictures out of the rear camera so let's go and uh, shoot some video and we'll see how this looks well to switch camera views you just swipe swipe either left or right that's how you switch camera views um, tap to start and stop recording that turns the microphone off or on and um, it has voice control too. I'm not even going to go there. 
Um, what else do we need to know about this? Tap the screen. Recorder file is locked. So you can lock files manually or they will automatically lock when an impact or strong deceleration is detected. And you can adjust that sensitivity. But you can always lock a file. So if you see somebody, you know, you see a drunk driver weaving around and you want to record evidence of it, you can lock the file so that it won't get overwritten so that you can go back later and keep that file. That's what the, the that feature is for. I like the features of it. I wish the bracket, the internal bracket, would allow it to be mounted in my rear window. You can adjust the brightness by moving your finger up and down. You can turn it off completely by, this doesn't stop the recording, it just turns off the display so that you can use it as a mirror because then you can angle this and actually see a reflection in it. Most people that have these type of mirrors that I know don't use them as a rear view mirror, they use them with the camera on. Saying that though, sometimes at night, it's beneficial to turn the display off and just use the dim reflectivity of the mirror to see the car behind you. Um, if you don't like the, the the LCD screen because some people having that screen on bothers them So you have the ability to shut it off and uh, Let's see to play back recordings You can tap on the screen uh, Where is it? We'll just tap it if we hit home quit the current video. Yes, and then we can uh, go to the System settings Here's where you can set up your sound key tone, auto power off, the sleep screen, speed unit in kilometers or miles, language setting, voice control, satellite information, date and time settings, disk formatting for the memory card, restore to factory. And we already saw the uh, mirror image <clears throat> that I set up before. Smart drive, this is where you would set up. Oh, it's got um, blind blind spot detection. Uh, oh, it's, it'll turn it off if I'm in 4K. But you can turn on blind uh, blind spot um, warning so that if you're going to change lanes enough, it'll give you a warning if there's a vehicle on either side. So you can turn these settings on. Again, I'm not going to go through any of these settings, but I guess this one here. So you have to set it up. Okay, that's how that works. The red line in the skyline is where the earth and sky meet. The green line is, a, is the the green line is the center line, and the yellow line is the hood line. So this is where you would adjust it for you adjust it for your hood line, center of the road, and adjust it so that you have your horizon set. And this one here to calibrate this, you would set yellow boxes, a warning area on both sides of where your, uh, where, the, where the lane is. Right, you just save file explorer. That should be to play back files that you've already recorded so you can play them back on the camera itself or on the display video a and video b that's your back or video f is your front so this will allow me to play back recordings that were made on the card of course you can pull the card and just take it and um, plug it into your computer which is normally the way that you would do it so you can see someone was walking up the street when i was setting the camera up and it was recording so you can play them back on the camera itself or on the down the mirror itself skip ahead to the next track etc go back if we want to look at the back camera it would be video b video lock it will show me images that i locked so when i hit that button this is what it saved the front and the rear or front and back as they call it video f and video b that is uh that is that let's take this thing out for a drive now because um it's going to be getting dark i like to get some shots while the sun is still up and then we'll do some other shots in the dark so let's go take a drive Unfortunately, I didn't have the sound turned on when I was doing the daytime shots, although I did when I reviewed the footage. 
I went and turned the sound on when I did the nighttime shot so we can get some sound off of the camera itself. Um, this is a shot, of course, out the front window. This is the 4K shot. The camera records 4K, it records in H265. And in order for me to import this into my editing software, because my software is old, it does not support H.265. I've gone over this before. Why I don't have newer software and why I'm still running Windows 7 as opposed to, say, running Windows 10. It's because Adobe, in all their wisdom, decided that they were going to follow the suit of uh, Microsoft and uh, Apple and decide to charge a monthly fee to use software that I already purchased and spent like $1,500 when I bought the package uh, 10 years ago or so. And I don't fit into that mold that you're going to keep selling me something over and over again. I don't subscribe to Netflix or Amazon Prime or Spotify or any of those other services that want money every single month. I don't believe in it. Okay, I like to own my media. I buy my music or I record it off the radio, but I don't keep paying a fee to listen to it. And for the same reason, I don't have XM Radio or any other of those type of subscription services. I don't have any subscription software. All the software I have is software that I own. So because of that, I am stuck with using Windows 7 and uh, Premiere Pro. Now watch this goofball coming up here because uh, I had a few choice words for this guy. This is a stop sign and this guy just keeps going and I've got the right of way because I'm in the lane and he damn near runs me off the road. But that's that. Anyway, um, Let's take a look at the same footage from the back camera and we'll see how the images from the rear camera because there's nothing really to see here except for this big truck. So here's the same shot, shot from the back camera. Now remember this is a 1080 camera and I'm uh, scaling this up to, to uh, 4K resolution. So this one should not look quite as sharp, just like the preliminary shots when I was installing it I had my camera set in 1080 mode but I wanted to render the video out at 4k so we can see the quality of the front camera so the rear camera obviously is not going to look as good but if you were to mount this camera out on your back bumper where it's designed to go this is exactly how it will look and it looks good on the mirror I was very impressed with the quality of the image and if I could mount this on my car without having to drill some holes I would certainly have this camera mounted at the back of the car because it is wonderful to be able to see a good image of what's going on behind you and even at night this look great this camera may end up being in my car if i ever can get myself to take the back bumper apart and run the wiring in i was that impressed with how it looked um, as I mentioned, I had to convert the files over though in order to import them into my editing software, I had to convert the files from the H265 to H264. That's not an issue though. I, the files play fine. I could play them fine with VLC, did not have to convert them or anything, but I did have to convert them in order to make the video and do the editing. So that might have degraded the image ever so slightly, but they still looked really good. Now, coming up here, you're going to see this guy uh, that uh, wasn't uh, really huge. I think he was in just a hurry to get home from work because uh, those are guys leaving the construction site. But they do have a stop sign there, and they're supposed to look to see if there's anybody coming that has the right of way. And this guy obviously wasn't paying attention. Anyway, um, that's the rear camera during the day. I'll show a few more shots in some other neighborhoods and uh, then we'll take a look at the nighttime shots and then we'll finish this up pretty quick just going to take a drive up the bluff where some of the expensive houses are not that there's any cheap houses in this area that doesn't that doesn't happen but this is the area where the homes are multi-million dollar homes
Anyway, as you can see, the, the quality of the image, I'm, I'm picking these shots because there's a lot of detail. We've got, we've got all the trees changing color and I just think the, the quality is just fantastic off of this camera. And the fact that you can record without having any overlays on it. My other camera, for example, and I can turn them off, but it, it puts the speed and the, the GPS info right on the image. Whereas this one, it saves as a separate file. So if you use the included video player that's included, it puts a, it puts a link on the SD card that you can download the video player software. And the video player software will take the embedded GPS data, which is not showing on the screen here, but it will show it on the computer screen and you can overlay it on a map and see where the recording was made. The main camera that I have installed in my car, which is always running, which is 4K, it puts the data on the, on the image. Although I can turn it off if I want, I can turn it off. I generally keep it on though, because it's nice to have a record so then in the event of an accident, I have a, a, a recording that shows how fast I was going and where I was at the time that way. I mean, that's the reason you, you put a camera in your car anyway, right? So that if something happens, if you're involved in an accident, you can prove who is at fault. And it can, it can go against you too, though, right? Because uh, if you're at fault, you're going to prove yourself at fault. But if somebody else runs into you, you can prove that it was their fault like that guy that ran the stop sign. Had he hit me, I would have had video evidence that he ran that stop sign. Okay, let's just look at the back camera here momentarily, just to show the traffic behind me. And then, uh, and of course, we've got the sun shining into the lens too, which is which is good because it shows that the, the camera can respond well, even with bright light shining into it. It's not making the whole entire picture go dark on something like some cameras used to. But here's the, the back view. As you can see, it's not reversed. It's only reversed in the mirror. So the image I see is like looking in a mirror, although you can toggle that on and off. The image that gets recorded is true to what you would see if you were facing backwards looking out the back window. So everything is in the correct perspective. So once again, this is the 1080 version. Uh, this is 1080, this picture I've just scaled it up to 4K so that it fills the full screen. So it's not gonna be quite as clear as the other one. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about the camera, and I mean, it's not really a big deal, but it, it records 25 frames per second. So I'm rendering the video out at 25 frames per second instead of 30. But other than that, uh, I, I really don't find much in the way of flaws with this camera. I'm going to go to the night shots now. And we'll finish this up just doing a couple of night shots because the video is getting kind of long. I think at this point you've probably got a pretty good idea how good it looks in the daytime so let's see how it looks in the dark I had the mic gain a little too high there's a setting on there for microphone gain I had the mic gain turned up with too high on it turned the sound on but I ended up with lots of uh, lots of noise all that noise you hear that racket is actually the uh, that's the defroster running and it's really bringing the bringing the sound of the fan up to the point where it's almost unbearable. I think most of that noise is probably, I'm gonna kill the sound here because this is just getting unbearable, but most of that noise is coming from the actual air from the defroster blowing right on the microphone. There, that's a little better. Uh, no dash cam I've ever tried actually has very good sound they all are pretty atrocious this one here just where it's mounted it just just so happens that the i had the fan going because it was the window was fogging up it's nighttime and we're we get fog you can see the fog around the, the around the uh, street lights right and even some on the window the windows are frosted up a bit but i had the defroster running on high and the uh, vent i guess the the, the actual air circulating over must have been blowing right on the microphone on the front of the camera because man it sure made a lot of noise on there but the, the sound quality off of dash cams never is very good and which is fine you, you know you're not re recording some music recital on it and uh, most people turn the sound off on their cameras anyway i know that i normally do i don't normally 
have the sound recorded. This was recorded in November. It was around 8 o'clock at night. Um, pitch black. The light you see in the sky is just light from the city reflecting and light from the playing field and stuff. But it is really dark. It looks a lot brighter on camera than it is. And it's actually very good. I'm going to let this play out as I drive through the town section so we can observe how it performs with oncoming headlights and so forth. And then we'll do the same section from the rear camera and uh, then we'll end this one. And I'm just going to shut up now and let you guys just look at the picture. Okay, that's it. If you guys stuck around to the end, great. This has gone on way too long. Anyway, that's that's the mirror dash cam. Link is in the description. I hope this uh, gives you a good idea how good it performs in low light. And it is, it does work exceptionally well in low light. Thanks for watching.